So this is the uh, Jaguar XJC, so it's a 1976 uh, continuing project here. And I'll show you a little bit about uh, what I'm doing. So uh, it's down to the bare tub, and I've we've recorded on this uh, earlier uh, what I'm doing, but uh, you can see I have this the the rear quarter, and I've re uh, flared it. So normally these have a, a flare that um, uh, just um, comes out about here, kind of uh, flattens out. Um, so this is a we've re flared the rear and actually not going to do uh, anything on the front uh, flare uh, and actually if you look at the profile the rear flare is actually the same profile so i've mimicked that front and rear where they were they were pretty different and the, the rear flare actually didn't take much of a uh, of a step out here so i am um you know the, the goal here is to is to lower the car um, put um, more meat on the ground, more tires uh, on the ground. And um, I can do that inboard uh, a lot of it. I really don't want a, a, a big flare type. I want a little bit more of a subtle, smooth look. So if you kind of look down the line here, you can see uh, the rear flares are going to kind of uh, match the, the fronts in how far they're out. So I didn't want that wild and crazy and so we can go inboard here um, uh, you know quite a bit uh, before uh, I've got a problem and that's true of the of the, uh, of the fronts uh, as well I've got a lot of room uh, inboard so these uh, these cars these Jags have the suspension the uh, the hubs are real uh, real far out and so you end up with a lot of offset uh, on the stock rims anyway. And that's why it's hard to, to get these rims or uh, wheels for these cars that have any kind of lip on them. Uh, external lip is, is because the hub is so far out. You end up with a um, scenario, um, a scenario uh, where um, there, there, there's just either one, a bunch of rims sticking out from the fender, or, uh, or two, you end up with a, uh, what almost looks like a front wheel drive wheel where there's just almost uh, no lip. Uh, so, I had rims made. Um, I used a company by the name of uh, Evod, and I had the wheels designed, um, and really I'm getting a little bit of, of, a, of a outboard lip, but not a lot. Uh, but I am going inboard, and the the rim that I'm uh, having made is is kind of a a version of a uh, a Campagnolo rim that I like off of uh, little uh, oh, late 50s, early 60s Abarths. Uh, it's a real Italian kind of kind of look, and I like that concept of the Italian uh, wheels on the on the British car. I had to have those made, uh, you know, one because of the size. I mean, I've only seen that rim in a in a 13 inch, uh, and I'm I'm doing 17 inch on this car. Uh, stock rims on this car are 15s. I'm going with 15, so I end up with the same uh, outer circumference uh, circumference on the on the rubber, but I'll run a, a shorter shorter tire and wider. So because I'm having them made. I can uh, pretty accurately pick the offset that I want, how, where they land on the hub. Now I could, if I was gonna go to that level, completely change the suspension and move things around, but honestly, these are pretty well engineered suspensions on these cars. And uh, there, you know, it has the independent Jag you know, rear suspension. Uh, the front end is actually you know, pretty well set up. Uh, and um, I can lower it and and compensate and get the geometry back. So I really don't want to change that a whole lot because it actually is pretty good. Uh, so uh, I had the rims made to take up what was available, both outboard and inboard, and get as much as I could on the road, as much tire on it as I could, and still have it uh, viable and workable and not look weird. I want it to have a kind of sleeper kind of 
uh, low stance that is not um, outrageous looking. Uh, I don't want to do the, um, oh, the you know the race car uh, broad speed kind of kind of look on this. So you know externally. Um, that's kind of the biggest project externally. I am putting a Series 1 uh, bonnet on this car. Uh, so, oh, uh, I think, uh, I can't remember when the Series 2s, you know, came out, but they had the federalized 5 mile an hour bumpers and they changed the front grille a little bit smaller. Uh, but the bonnets uh, switch out uh, completely. Um, so I've got the bonnet off of a Series 1, which had the chrome bumpers and, and the much bigger uh, grille. Uh, and I'll have to fit it to the car, but I mean, it, it's basically drop in. Uh, so I get that early look uh, front end. And the other thing I'm doing is I have completely removed uh, any, uh, sem uh, any uh, semblance of the federalized bumpers, uh, the big bumpers. And actually, at this point, the design is such that um, I'm gonna go, I think, completely without uh, bumpers. And uh, go for a real uh, a smooth look. Um, I love this era of Jag. Well, I, I actually, right from the early cars, the XKs, uh, post war cars up, I love the smooth flowing lines. Uh, and these were kind of the end of that, uh, these bodies, um, but they're very pretty, very sculpted. And I kind of wanted to get uh, back to that minimalist kind of look. So, um, one of the things, other things I'm doing here is, is you can kind of see I have uh, completely removed the waistline here from from the, the air, rear fender and all the way around. So this now goes just all the way open, and you can see the remains or the mount point um, for the what was the um, five mile an hour bumpers. So I've completely removed this waistline where the bumpers were. Now on, on these Jags, this was an external seam here. And this section is removable because the fuel tanks are inside there. I am going to be removing the fuel tanks, or already have. Um, and this is gonna be all fixed panel. So the idea here is this, this is continuous flow right down under this very cool, um, smooth and it rolls all the way under the body which is a uh, which is a jag thing from this era so just completely smooth flowing transition of metal all the way uh, across so it's smooth the whole way back i still then have to deal with where to put the fuel tanks so you know normally the fuel tanks would on either side would be uh, in that area there i'm going to put the fuel tank up here in this bulkhead Area. I've, uh, I've got a tank. I, you, we always try to use a fuel safe, a fuel safe uh, because they're an Oregon company here. Um, and I'll use one of their tanks uh, there. And as part of the kind of the smoothing process, I'm going to uh, remove these. Now, these are the, the fuel access points. So this would normally fuel this tank. And the same thing um, on the other side here would fuel... Uh, from that side. So you have two tanks and the car would be switchable back and forth. I'm going to smooth these over. So I'm going to you know, be coming in here and it just be metal and all straight up and smooth. Um, so the fuel tank is going to be in here and I've really kind of wrestled whether or not I want to bring it out to a, uh, a presentation out on the fender or again and I think at this point not. Um, I think I'm going to have to mount the tank here and in this area create um, uh, a receiver dish here that'll house the fuel. So in that regard, the trunk's open to um, fuel the tank. Uh, I'm a little bit torn on that, but I, I really want the smooth body on the exterior. So um, yeah, that's just going to be how that is. So anyway, so that gives me a nice smooth um, uh, presentation. And so the, also the, if you look on the, on the rear deck lid, these, so if you look here, there's just a, um, a ton of holes. I mean, a lot. You, you just kind of see how many 
holes there are uh, in this thing. And it's there's there's trim that goes here. So the tail lights are here, and there's trim that comes over here. There's lights here, and more tri big chrome trim. There's a big chrome big thing here. Um, badges here, and I'm just going to smooth all this. So all that's going to be left is I'm going to leave this presentation here um, for the lock, for the trunk. I am going to leave that. I don't want to smooth that. Um, and so then after, after this profile here over the, over the top of the deck lid, it's flush, and it will just flow right under the body, smooth. And this will all be smooth, very clean. And, and I'm going to uh, kind of recreate the taillight housings so that they just end here, They're just this section. They normally have a chrome thing that comes over here, and I'm going to uh, eliminate that so it's just a nice isolated uh, little area. Also going to, um, uh, these are the federal uh, marker lights, um, and there's these are on front and rear. Uh, you can see here in the in the front, it's the same um, the same setup. So that was those were federalized, um, and anyway, those are those are coming out as well as uh, holes like here for the mounts for the jet uh, with the little uh, Jaguar badge and that kind of stuff so i've actually got a lot of after i get the back done i've got a lot of metal work to do just filling things and smoothing things that i want to clean up uh, this so the engine compartment here also is just riddled uh with holes and i mean just almost more holes than metal i mean uh and i really want to clean that up i mean the the uh firewall there is, is actually uh, pretty clean uh, but out here uh, in the sides it's just a ton of holes so uh, there's a v, there's a v12 I've, I've built a uh, I think it's a 95 um, um, I think it's a 95 uh, v12 uh, six liter that I built for this and that's already built and I've mated that to a uh, t56 six speed on um, all that has not been fitted in here the v12s were originally in this car that's not a problem i've got all those motor mounts and uh, and all that kind of stuff but the transmission uh, i still have to fit in here i don't think it's gonna be a colossal problem because the, the transmissions that were in these things uh, were the automatics were rather large and they already have a pretty good sized tunnel so i don't really think i'll have any issues i'll obviously have to make some changes but i don't think there i don't think there will be an enlarging of the tunnel might be a couple of massage moments here, but um, I don't think um, I'll have to. Uh, you, you can kind of see the tunnel here, and as it goes, it's a pretty good chunk of room. And uh, I need to see where the um, shifter lands. I think I've got it mapped out in there where it uh, where it lands. So I got it. The, I'll get the engine and transmission stuff hidden here at some point and start assembling uh, the car and um, at that point uh, get all the plumbing and, and everything in place uh, where I want it uh, and then it all has to come out and I'll mark all these holes and I'll mark all the ones that are redundant and unnecessary and I'll fill them uh, but you really can't choose um, which ones that is until you've assembled fully assembled the car with wiring harness uh, and everything so there's kind of be some there's a lot of metal work I can do um, in between here um, but uh, some of this stuff uh, I'm gonna have to determine um, when the car is assembled uh, the first time and um, eliminate them uh, after it comes back apart uh, really just no way to really confirm um, what I need one way or the other uh, until that's done so the um, so the two-door coupes they're a uh, and there's no B pillar there's no they're pillarless here which is you know one uh, one of the things I really like and these were these were made by hand essentially they fabricated these uh, um, coupes and um, you can see this the brake line here so this is not um, not a stamped panel this was made out of pieces of other panels for I'm assuming for the uh, for the four doors but you can see the again the 
the cut line here all the way up and then around here kind of these odd shaped welded uh, panels to create this uh, two-door uh, version uh, and so they uh, they never body worked this they all these cars had vinyl tops uh, which I don't like and I'm not going back with uh, so this will all get body worked and smooth it's, it's that's not unique uh, a lot of people that do these cars and restore them uh, eliminate the vinyl roof some like it some don't I don't um, so it's going to go away. Um, I thought about, uh, you know, the Series 3, um, uh, the Series 3 Jags um, had uh, sunroofs. And I thought that would, uh, would be pretty cool if I morphed in a, harvested a sunroof, uh, uh, an electric retracting sunroof off of a Series 3. I'm still contemplating that. Um, I mean, they're they're full body sunroofs, so that all you see is this the outline, and it drops and goes away. That you know, it all be pretty cool. Uh, it's a lot of fabrication, and I, I like I like the smooth look. So I'll think about that one. Um, see how the rest of it goes here, and how I'm feeling, and whether or not I want to take that on. And I don't know. I'm, I'm not 100% sure that it would fit. Uh, this roof is shorter than the four-door, and I'm not sure if the runners would have room uh, or, or that the roof would change shape too quickly before I could, it would be able to, re <clears throat> to retract all the way. Uh, so we'll, we'll figure that one out. Uh, I am going to leave door handles on it and things like that. Uh, I'm not going for a complete weird smoother look, um, uh, just minimalistic. Um, we'll go from there. I am not um, going to uh, put a... Oh, I've got a tarp in here, but I'm not going to put rear seats in it. So you can kind of see the area here. Um, there's a lot of room um, available here. Um, a lot of a lot of room, and so. Um, I don't know, I, you know, I, I, in my cars, I, I, I rarely um, have people in the back seat, and this is a two-door coupe, so, you know, the, the chances of, of me carrying more than me and someone else are slim to none, uh, and I want that space. Um, I want to build a deck in there. Uh, I want to put my um, controls in there. So I'm doing a, a different control system. Um, I, you know, I've, the... The V12 engine is running on a uh, on a Haltech system, uh, injected Haltech system. So I've got that computer to deal with. Uh, I am working on a computer version, a computerized version of the uh, control system for the car itself. So uh, that's uh, one of the things I'm doing here. Um, oh, you can see my stuff here <laughs> up on the wall. I'm uh, playing with uh, control modules. And um, my my thought is to um, uh, create a uh, control system uh, that I can manage from a computer to run everything. So uh, Tesla-like or any you know modern car that has a lot of more cars now have a um, a uh, computer screen. Um, yeah, there, it's evolving. That that is evolving as a thing. There are you know there's companies that have. Uh, some semi-automated um, PLC kind of uh, things for cars, but they're, the user interfaces are weird uh, and not particularly functional. Uh, I want a much uh, greater level. I want to have a screen, a uh, Tesla-like screen, uh, that I can control things, right down to controlling the windows up and down and uh, with other aspects of the car. Um, and really integrate it. So to do that, I have to um, have all the I/O or the inputs and outputs so from every brake light, tail light, pedal switch, you know, whatever, light, everything, every button has to have has to go into um, um, a controller that I can get access to to program it. Uh, and then I can make them do whatever I want, and I can present uh, and and, um, and write my own. Um, GUI or graphic user interface and uh, and control it. So that's the goal. And 
because of that, you know, this takes up a little bit of room. Um, I don't want to try to stuff all that up, up under the dash. The goal here is to do a very minimalistic dash uh, as well, with just absolute minimum number of buttons uh, or external interface uh, as we can. Um, so I want to hide all that stuff. And I think under the deck, under the rear seat there, will be perfect opportunity to put computers, the Holotech computer, the, uh, the main uh, body ECU computer that I'm going to uh, program. Uh, I can hide all that stuff there and it'd be a nice centralized, cool, uh, isolated from the environment um, location. And the battery's going to be in the trunk, so uh, close, reasonably close to the power source uh, as well. Uh, the only difficulty with having the battery in the trunk is, of course, you got to get a decent sized cable up to the starter. But uh, that way I can leave, uh, I'm going to create my own dash and I can do that and make it. Uh, really uh, minimalistic um, and there's not on these uh, you know the dash uh, here uh, the you know in this area is is where the factory um, heater box uh, with the evaporator and the heater core uh, is and all the decision making uh, that goes with that and it's reasonably compact I was going to look at doing um, you know, vintage air or something like that, but uh, I think I'm just going to rebuild the the stock evaporator box, but use some modern actuators. Uh, it's normally air air controlled, um, vacuum controlled on the diverter valves and blending valves on that, and I think I'm going to use uh, motorized modern motorized little motors on that, so that I can actually I can control those um, and. Uh, and do that. Otherwise, it's going to take some quite a bit of re-engineering to um, to get something else uh, here. And it's mounted in the center, which leaves me uh, these areas on the sides um, uh, pretty open. And I can get a, a scenario where I can get um, a dash here that's that's I want it pretty far away and pretty simple without a lot of stuff uh, buried behind it. So. That's the, the, the motivation on that. Um, so, uh, you know, cranking ahead uh, pretty good here. The goal now is to get all this uh, fabrication, as much of the hard fabrication as I can, done to the point where I've got to assemble the car. And at that point, I've got to assemble the car, just basically build it uh, while, it, while it's in, in raw metal uh, and just build the wiring harness, build the dash, build everything, and fully assemble the car. Um, and then it comes apart again, and then I can finish out the fab work of filling up holes and uh, modifying things and, and uh, whatnot, and then go back together again. Um, so kind of a tedious process, but it's, it's coming. So the, uh, the metal work is uh, moving along at a pretty good uh, rate here. Uh, we've got to make the, uh, these corner pieces, which is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, you can kind of see that uh, this uh, this angle here to this angle here in a short amount of space, we've got a transition, uh, and that um, you know along here, excuse me, that is just a that's a simple crown uh, that shouldn't be any big deal, uh, but that corner um, that corner uh, where you go from a tight radius to to a, an expanding wide one. Uh, a little bit more tricky to make. So I'll get that made and that'll kind of close up a lot of the big fab and uh, I think we'll start working on putting the car together, you know, putting the fuel tank in and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, get the engine and trans in it, uh, get the suspension back in it and whatnot. And the, uh, the wheels are best, uh, I had wheels made like I said and uh, they're done, they're shipping, so I should have those in, uh, in a few days. I'm pretty excited to see those. So at that point, we'll get the suspension back in it and uh, get the wheels on it and look at the stance, set the, set the right height, kind of get a feel for if the look is uh, dialing into it you know, the way we thought it would. Uh, and that is that.